Straw Hut Media. Thanks for joining us on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Dive into the unseen realms with spiritual mediums James Van Prague and Kelly White as we redefine perspectives on life, death, and human experiences. I'm, I'm Santa Barbara, and I'm on a retreat, personal retreat. And um, it's all about the sunset from where I'm at. I look out and see the sunset every night, and there's a dog park across the street. And that's my world right now. So How great really is that? It. And Isn't I'm writing it? my new book, so I'm going to start that tomorrow. So I came to Santa Barbara to start my new book, too. It's a perfect, perfect inspirational place, right? It, it really is. It, I, I came here when I first moved to Los Angeles back in 1982 um, to be a sitcom writer. I mean, nothing about spirituality, you know, didn't mm-hmm. at all. I took a Greyhound bus up to Santa Barbara, never heard, never been there. And I went to the beach and I made a list of 10 items in this journal. Journals had just come out. And uh, the 10 items I wanted to accomplish in my life and what was a producer, helping people, I'm not sure how, financial success or, you know, security, um, serving humans, whatever it was. And I've accomplished all 10. So this place has held a lot of, yeah, I think I wrote it. Bravo. Yeah. And I think it was, um, yeah, this this has always held a special place for me, Santa Barbara. But it was also um, part Summerlin, this is the town called Summerlin, which is where the first spiritualist camp began in California wow. in the eight, late 1800s. And they used to set up tents here, spiritualist tents. And people came from all from California, but also all over the country. And these were the very first spiritualist tents and, and areas were. And they have a house called the, the Big Yellow House, which is still here. Wow. Which is um, there, and I'm 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 staying in a place not too far away, but it feels really nice. And I went to Ojai yesterday, which is a great town in the middle of the mountains, and that was really nice. So, and you ran yeah. into some friends. I ran into some friends. A friend of mine, um, very well known person who had hadn't seen twenty five years. I walked into a gym, and there she was. I'm like, are you the owner of the gym? She goes, Oh no, I'm not. It's like no business. Oh, I don't know you. So, and then I went to producer friends of mine. I met in Sedona. Leslie and Lisa out in the middle of Ojai. We had dinner and it was great. I was just talking about them the day before to a, for another friend of mine. So it was really interesting how things all come together. The strings yeah. all attach and they they show. Yeah. Well, I remember on the drive up, you were texting me pictures. I, I texted you. And it, they said, Sweet James, Sweet you know, the James, Sweet the James, James, the billboards. Six and times. Then, the billboards. Six times. And oh. then underneath it, there was a phone number. And the phone number had all those zeros on it zero, 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 zero. And, and I was. That? Well, when every, anybody sees all the numbers of zero, 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 it means it's exactly where you're supposed to be. Oh. It's like a destiny number. It feels that way. It definitely feels that way. Yeah. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's really exciting. Yes. Pearl is with me. I've, I've got the dog beach uh, right across the street. Is a dog beach and um, also a dog park. So I'm visiting all the dog parks and... Um, I've already met, yeah, all these people come up to me and say hello. They don't know who I am, but it's 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 great. Um, yeah, so. Good, good. Have you been it's, to a blizzard yet, Kelly? I have. Last couple of years, I'm sure I have, but tomorrow was a real important day for me. It was getting my hair done day. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know you that's are. Gonna happen. <laughs> exactly. You know, these people are tough around here. I'm just not made of that. <laughs> Your hair looks great. I don't think you need to change your hair. You look good. Oh, my gosh. How was your friend in Brazil, the healer? Prajna. She's doing Prajna. very, very well. In fact, it's funny. James, tomorrow is her birthday. Really? She's a Capricorn. Yes. She was a Libra. Yes. Capricorn. And it, well, in Vedic astrology, she's a Sagittarius, which would make a little more sense. Yes. With this one. Yeah. <laughs> with this one. But happy birthday, Prajna, if you're listening. Happy birthday, Prajna. It's great. Yeah. yeah, so Michelle, we love we women love our hair appointments. That's good. I love it's my true. massage appointments. There you go. <laughs> I do. I'm, while I'm up here, I'm gonna find it's a wonderful healing space here in Santa Barbara. A lot of spas and healing, and I'm gonna do some of that as well. I'm going um, right down the street is a gym, so I'll be going to the gym every day, which is uh, perfect for me and getting into that. And then you'll get your routine. Yeah, I already have a yoga set up when I go back February to back home, and uh, so that's all set up and. Yeah, it's great. And I'm writing my book will be great. So, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And, and also, I'm doing uh, something which I didn't know if I told you, Kelly. Um, at the end of this month, I can't must say much about it, but I've been working with my team over the holidays to come up with um, people have wanted uh, something, a course kind of where they can do um, healing from their traumas in the past and also how they do with boundary work okay. and also working with connecting with the spirit world and um, helping others to, once they discover how they can help others be aware of it. 
So we're working on this course, and um, we can't announce what it is yet, but it's coming up next couple of weeks. So I'm going to email it to everybody. I just worked on the emails. So um, make sure you guys have your emails uh, signed up on my website, and uh, we'll send you a copy of this this first-time course. Oh, it sounds very good. I'm very intrigued. Good. Great. It's a transformational uh, course, Kelly. Which is exactly perfect what time, the energy, right? perfect timing. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this energy, everybody, because this is some very, very powerful energy to start the year. Really powerful energy. This. So I, I, know I'm getting, I know, Kelly, I'm sure you've been getting it too, but I'm getting a lot of people. Um, it's really interesting how it's all coming back. People are coming up to me in the weirdest of places and say, I thank you for the work you did. You know, when I was a kid, I used to watch on television. When did this happen? I'm from out of the woodwork. I mean, it's really interesting. I'll be walking to a store. Someone, oh, you helped me. Or someone said, I read your book. And it's coming in really a lot. Well, you had one. Tell everybody recently with one of your doctors. You oh, yeah. Yes, I, went, I was very was ill. Unbelievable. I, was, I was pretty ill. And I went to see a, a doctor who was a concierge doctor. And um, it was, well, I, I COVID from Kelly and I had COVID in August, but then went to Europe and got another clobber of COVID. And I didn't take any medicine, and that was not good because I had bacterial infections throughout the body. That's really what it was. Then I finally took antibiotics. I got rid of that. Thank God. But in the meantime, I didn't have a doctor. So a friend of mine, Cheryl, helped me find a concierge doctor. And it was really rough going. I must say, it was rough going. I met this gentleman in La Jolla down at the, um, there's a, place there, office there for this clinic. And I, and being, being who I am, he uh, he walks in and I said, well, how are you? And he goes, good, how are you? I said, good. And I started interviewing him. And I said, um, and when is your birthday? He goes, I'm Taurus. I said, of course, you're a good looking man because that's the most physical sign, Taurus, most physical good looking sign. And I said, and what's your background? He said, he's Kuwaiti and he is Irish. And he has this wonderful, beautiful energy. I said, I just love your energy. And I said, oh, and you're married? Yes, I have a wife and child and a baby. And I said, oh, and you're thinking of moving. He goes, well, as a matter of fact, I said, yeah, you're going to move. He goes, wait a minute, lower your mask. And I did. He said, I know you. I I know that voice. I watched you when I was a kid on television. <laughs> so, and, uh, but what and about then, his mother? Because it was yeah, an amazing his mother, story. Called me later on, we talked to me and he said, um, you know, you really are a healer. I said, as are you. And he said, you helped to change my, um, my family's life. I said, how would that happen? And his sister had died 20 years old also ago. And his mother went to a demonstration and it changed her life. And you so had done the demonstration. I did that demonstration. Oh, yeah. which is amazing. That's so full circle. It's full circle. Because you're going to have a hard time finding a doctor. So it's yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, and that was meant to be. I think his sister obviously totally. got us together because it was a connection. Totally. And yeah, right. so, yeah, so it's really yeah. great. We ever do, you know, whenever you do things in life, I think everybody, you do them and you don't, have any connection to it you just do the right thing and, and later it comes back i i do it never expecting anything back but it does come back in its own magical way it's meant to be yeah it's so fascinating to me my mom used to say you never know who your angels are yes my anakara <laughs> i love that i love that i gave kelly a book of a crystal called anakara it's from john yeah. donahue i have it right here oh yeah right there <laughs> I and have it right here. I really? love this book. It's such a good book. It means soul friend. My my good friend Margaret Duffy in Ireland, if you're watching Margaret, um, she gave it to me and it means soul friend. And it's the it's the vibration, the frequency of the information, the wisdom, the knowledge that Kelly and I relate to and a lot of you do. Very much. And what someone said, my roommate said, it reminds me of your books, James. I said, Yeah, in a way it is. So um that's kind of my inspiration for writing my new book in in a way. And uh, John Donahue passed when he was, I think, 54. But yeah. his book, On a Car, was on the international bestseller list, the same list that Talking to Heaven was on at the same time. James, that's amazing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Another and, you know, one. and he was, he <laughs> was our age, too. And he was our age. Yeah. I, it's, it's fascinating to me. <laughs> fascinating to me. Yeah. Pretty, and it's a great book. On a Car, it's called. Yeah. It's really Thank good. you, Ellie. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> hey, Lizette Perez. Working out, Kelly. Your workout videos. So tell us okay. your workout videos. Okay. Video. So let you me just say, everybody, <laughs> I had a lot of views on that. And so um, I have a trainer. I have a private trainer that I love. And she said, you know, let's try some new new things. I'm like, okay. She goes, put this thing on your head. And I'm like, okay. So I put this thing on my head. And then you start punching these balls. And she, I didn't know it was being filmed. You know, so 
Anyway, then uh, I saw it. It was so damn funny, James. And, you know, the one thing that you and I both do is we laugh at ourselves constantly. I mean, constantly laugh at ourselves. So I gave it to Carissa. I said, yeah, what do you think? If you want to put it on, I don't care. So I have two more coming up, everybody. Um, Except for this snow blizzard that has. So I don't know if that's going to block me working on it. It'll come up. But it was fun. It was. I, I hope I'm inspirational to everybody, you know, by doing that. Yeah, that's great, Kelly. That's great. Too funny. And, and Margaret, hello, Mark Went, hello, Nora Zara, hello. <laughs> so we have 2024. Dun dun dun. For me, it's starting at well, 2023 ended with a boom, boom, boom. Yes. So 2024 is starting off to be okay. Well, let me talk about that energy because yeah. this energy of 2024 is very different than the end of 2023, James. The end of 2023 and then the first few days were very, very challenging energies because of the term I always use, Gandanta. Very, very tough times and tough energy. But now the energies are really moving forward in such a positive way. So let me explain to everybody what is happening because I think it's really important. Um, So in the Hindu Vedas, in the Veda is the Hindu scripture. And it was written thousands of years ago. And the reason those are important is those are the days you set your intentions for the year. And you set a tone for what you would like for the year. And it's a, such a positive energy. And right now, uh, Jupiter and Mars are at making this spectacular connection. So there's going to be lots of positive energy going forward because now Jupiter is direct. And the most magical thing that's happening is that in Vedic astrology, Jupiter is in Aries. And Jupiter is the largest planet. It's benevolent. It it means the the guru, the teacher. And it's in Aries, which is a fire sign. And Mars is in Sagittarius, said also a fire sign. So when Jupiter in Aries, which is ruled by Mars, and Mars is in Sagittarius, which is ruled by by Jupiter, and it's an exchange of energy. And when this exchange of energy happens, it, it makes everything very powerful and lots of fire energy and lots of passion energy and lots of positive thinking energy. So this is the best possible time to be setting your intentions of and rethinking your life and your lifestyle choices because 2024 is quite a year coming up. And so we want to be able to have as much strength as possible and really good mental health this year, too. So this is a year, um, if you can set the the intentions right now, it would just be so fantastic. But on top of that, because there's another thing, too, we have a new moon in Sagittarius. And the new moon, this particular new moon, is a destiny new moon. So, And the reason it's a destiny new moon is because this new moon sits at 26 degrees of Sagittarius. Again, oh, Sagittarius, right? I'm but what's 26 it? degrees Sagittarius moon. Okay, James, then this is going to take I'm your year. degrees Sagittarius moon. Okay. Hello. Honey, you're, you're, <laughs> this life, you start, you're starting off at the perfect place because it's going to go like totally take off for you. Because yeah. this new moon at 26 degrees of Sagittarius is the exact midpoint between the nodes of Rahu and K2. Now to be in the middle, the exact midpoint between the nodes, nodes are our destiny. So this sets the tone for the year. And it means to, um, it symbolizes expansion and adventure and spiritual growth. And it brings us, which is to your point, James, new experiences. It will broaden our perspectives. And it helps us to um, embrace, if you will, the unknown. So this is an excellent time to review and to renew your objectives and your commitments because and align them with your highest good. These energies are so powerful at this time to do this. And James, this will really change your life. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Teresa Zackle said, how do you set your intentions? Are they for the year? Okay. So let's give them ways they can Let's do give that. them ways. How do you set the intentions? I mean, James, do you want to start with this? Well, for, for me, you'll, you'll say something different than I will. For me, there's all different ways. But for me, and I'm just because of her, I want her to be like a child, like a little girl, like use your imagination. 
and you can draw something that you want out. You can write words out and you can also visualize yourself in a time machine and see where you are in five years or 10 years what, where, and see yourself living that way down to what you're wearing, what you're eating, even tasting it, where, you know, everything you can as specific as possible. That would be your user imagination. That's one way of doing it. Oh, I actually love that. And um, you know our friend Peggy Fitzsimmons? Yes. So okay. Peggy wrote an, an amazing article about setting intentions. It's a wonderful article that she wrote for Maria Shriver. It's, it's, and it just came out today. But one of the things, James, that she says is, she says, when you talk about setting your intentions for 2024, she said, ask to be shown what your soul is longing for right mm. now. Whatever your soul is longing for. And she said, the answer may come to your point as like an image or a single word. And she said, once you identify your soul intention, then symbolically place it right in front of you. Wow. I thought that was a lovely thing. Pretty the good. thought of it, you know? Pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, and how I set my intention is I have what she also talks about is radical honesty. What do I need? Yeah. Where am I right now? What What is it that I need to go forward? Yeah, I, I always say, well, how will I be more fulfilled? And I, I'm pretty good at that. And what's so recently, my health now is going to be my health. I'm well, that'll be your a priority for That's you. That's priority. And yeah. Um, yeah. And um it just feels good to, to, to you know, I, I also said this to a friend of mine, a um, friend, Julie, you met her. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to you and, and people that I'm around, that really makes a difference. The biggest difference, I think, Kelly, and you know, we've talked about this, but the biggest difference, I think, in someone's life, if you're going to make intentions, you're going to have a sense of what you want, you're first going to know who you are. Yes. Because if you do that, knowing who you are, it's not going to have a lot of foundation. Right. You're always going to know who you are first. Who am I? And have that relationship first. Don't just give up the universe to give you this and that. You first got to do the work of knowing who you are. And that's really got to start from that point. What, right. what is needed for who you are. That's a great place to start with that. And, and, that, 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 that. and it actually goes to what she said about radical honesty. You know, mm -hmm. Being honest. Who are you? And where do you see yourself? And we're all and learning. Maybe we're we're all learning. Well, you know, James, you and I had a conversation the other day, and, and I, I thought this was a really profound and important conversation for people to know. And you said, we were talking, you said to me, you know, I feel like I have, I'm seeing the colors differently, and I'm. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Your energy. Well, I, we were tell, talking about I was that? ill, and I, become a very, I had what happened, so everyone knows on antibiotics, and it really wrought up at my stomach, a GI area, and I'm, because I'm a Virgo, we're very sensitive, that's our weakest area. And it became, I didn't expect to be so sensitized by it, but it was sensitive to everything, even a piece of sh like cake, a sweet cake, I, I couldn't have the sugar. I mean, it was just so sensitive, I started seeing colors and auras and- Well, that was it, the colors and the auras, and then you remember what happened, all of a sudden things were breaking. The batteries- Oh my were God. The yeah, electricity like was gonna go out. Yeah, yeah, both so, bursting. Yeah. And we were talking about that. <laughs> then I said- I said, Kelly, right. what's going on? This is I, your thing. <laughs> it is my thing. I said, your vibration is rising. Yeah. And I don't care who you are at any stage, your yeah. energies can shift and change. And that's one of the things behind an intention that you must remember that you can change, you can add, you can grow. That's, this is what we're here to do. We're here to move and expand. That's what we're here Exa to do. And expand. And you don't have to do it for other people because guess what? When you do it in yourself, because you have to worry about yourself, you can't worry about others because you just can't live right. their journey for them. Realize that when you expand and change and, and you know, that's who you are. But there might be other souls in your life who don't change and expect right. to be the same way you were. You can't do that. It's not being fair to yourself. Right. And yeah. you might find that there are people that you knew at one time, friends or acquaintances or workmates or even family members that say bye bye because it's at a different frequency, different vibration. Well, then. you know, it's so interesting. I, I was talking to my daughter the other day, and she told me something so interesting. She said, "My my connection with my father is level one." I said, "What does that mean?" She said, "Oh, you don't know about the levels?" I said, "No, I never heard this before. I thought this was so interesting." She said, "Level one, you know, superficial." <laughs> it's it's like you know okay you know talk about your, your the sister said this to you no my daughter oh, well, your daughter did <laughs> she, she's, a, she's a psychologist and she said you know level one and i said well what's level two and level, she said well level two is a little more intimacy with somebody a little more you talk a little bit more about what's going on but she said level three is really what where you want to get with somebody where you're really having an intimate conversation wow 
I thought that was a good good thing exactly. to kind of because there will be people as you grow and expand that will not grow and expand at your pace. They won't. And that, they that, will not. And that's okay. Body. That is just where they are. And you can't expect that from other people because you know no. they have their own journey and they grow and they're gonna grow and you can't force your partner or friend no, to grow. You it's cannot. just and it just it's natural, it happens, it changes. So it's you know, natural. It's, and some of that, when I was um, down, you know, a little out of it, I was um, very foggy. As you know, Kelly, we talked about oh, yeah. it. that fog is real. The brain fog was like, whoa. Very real. And it was, um, you know, as I went through this whole journey of five months, <laughs> five months. You're right. It was five months. Don't you five right? Months. Five months. Yeah. Um, it would came to me that, you know, I, I said to people, I make a joke. I say, you know, I don't even know months, weeks. I don't even know years. Forget it. I live in the moments. And that's what you can do. It's what we have at the moment. So live the most out of this. That's really what I do is live in the moment now and always. And I'm always now, even I used to before, but even more so, we talked about this. There are people that get you pissed off. Yes. You know, and I'm going to say generational, younger people who really like device people, all the group of devices. Yeah. There's no empathy. There's no connection with the human. Mm -hmm. So I have a good time with them. Um, <laughs> you do. Yeah, at the store, and you know they're not looking and say, yeah, yeah. And I say, I love your eyes, and you, if you smile with those eyes, it'll be so much brighter. And they they look at me like, huh? Oh, huh? They. It's so interesting. So I just uh, I have to do that because I want them to realize there's more to a world. <laughs> I thought about when I'm online or something, or or asking for help, and I reach a robot person. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have a little cutout screen and I'm going to go, hi, I would like to know where the mayonnaise, <laughs> while the mayonnaise is. So it looks like they're looking in a device, like a computer. Okay, Hello. that's very funny. Is that hysterical? <laughs> hi, because they'll understand it better, I guess. Maybe. Sorry, I mean, it does sorry. make you wonder if this is going to be just a, a you know, generations of. Okay. I was talking to someone today about being in Japan when it was just, that was what it was. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember 20 years ago when I was there, they were just looking at their devices and it's yeah. really scary now there. It's really, yeah. they have, okay, what do you hear about it? In universities, there are courses. This is the last night I did with my friends, Lisa and Leslie, telling me this. There are courses in Japan, courses in university to teach people how to talk to each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How to be intimate with each other, how to talk, how to go on a date. Well, so, you know, I worked for Japan Airlines for many oh, years. Yeah. And so this is was my actually my role, James, was to promote the Western and the Eastern. And I was to help them communicate. And that was in 1986. So I know it, it. This was part of the culture. And I would say, oh, no, this is what they mean. Oh, no, this is what he means. And I'd have to explain, you know, back and forth because it was, it was so different. Yeah. It, interesting. Imagine that with those electronics devices. Oh, no, now it would be it would be something else. Here's a question. This is from Sandy Johnson. She says, James, I had a lot of various intuitive abilities, and I don't feel them very much anymore. You had them. I, and she said, and I actually feel lost without them. What happened? They don't leave you. They don't leave. They yeah. don't leave you. So your mindset might be different. And if you put that sense of limitation and fear, you can create the limitation not being there. They're always there. But you have to, I don't know, put your mindset in a space where you're open to receiving them. You're open to, to um, um, using them, training them. Yeah, and being in a mindset we're using every day. I'm gonna have fun with this intuition. One of them discovered today. That's what you want to get to. You don't want to discover the you don't want to be in that black and white space. I have to have this, I can't do that. I no, no, no. It's a wonder, it's discovery, it's it's again knowing who you are, it's getting back to your own soul self. Having a relationship with your soul. That's, that's what you so want. True. Once you have a relationship with your soul, all the rest of it is the natural language of the soul, intuition. A spirit contact because we're part of many different worlds and but the human has to control things so you got to give yourself a break and let yourself feel and have fun with make it a game wow i wonder what which, which aisle the, the green beans are on let's just feel it you know right which right. elevator is going to come first you know is that person going to make a left turn or right i do it in traffic all the time the freeway okay are they going to come off to the left sort of the, and then and i did it the other day and i'm driving up here to santa barbara and i said this girl on my right side is going to cross over i just know it and, and it was dangerous. So I went a little faster. And sure enough, she, she was really going to cut me off. I knew she was going to do this, but it wasn't safe. And she comes by, she gives me the finger. So I knew it. I knew it. 
I just <laughs> intuitively know. <laughs> that's of course, terrible. I do. <laughs> oh God! But <laughs> it, but that's a great one. Intuition and traffic is good. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, sales! I always find sales very good. Parking spaces are great. Yeah. Um, all different ways with the phone, you know, the cell phone. But I don't. When I make a call to, if it's not a robot, I get actually human, which is a rare thing. But I try to feel the personality of that person, yeah. of what they're going to be like once I hear their voice. That's a good one. That's a good, good one. one. So well, we can use that every single moment of our lives. We can use intuition. No. Mm -hmm. And one of the things too that I think is really, really important, and it's something that people can do this year, is start a gratitude journal. Hundred percent. And what happens when you do gratitude, it actually expands the energy. It, like it recharges our soul and it rejuvenates us. So the gratitude, and it could be simple, simple things, right? With yes. a gratitude journal. I mean, simple, simple things here. Hold on, I'm just looking for mine, which I think I put Do you have yours? I Did have you my gratitude journal today. <laughs> oh my God, God that's so that. great. It's in the bedroom. But okay, it's but you have one. Yeah, I just started today. I think that's great. Because I came to Santa Barbara 40 years ago and everything happened. I'm so gratitude. There you go. I mean, just exactly. the sunset and the water. The sun and the water is phenomenal. And I, I mean, mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I just think that's... fun. You know, we humans are very... We should feel this mm -hmm. year coming forward that, you know, we have... It's a great... Even though it's the illusion here, it's an illusion world. You know, it, it's, it's a hard world, but it's also a great opportunity to grow. To oh. learn, to expand your mind. Let this yes. be a year that you're going to expand your mind. Because it's not going to be an easy year. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be world yeah. war. No doubt about it. But you, you know, it reminds me of Brian Weiss when I worked with him. And he did the meditation. It was such a great meditation. And it was really very, very um, profound. He talked about there was a, you're a mountain. And he said, you know, you're a tree on that mountain. And just become the tree. And the whole process of becoming the tree. And seasons will change. You know, the winter will come and the leaves will die off. And you'll go into a kind of a you know place of just coldness and you know you'll be shut down for just a little bit. Then the spring comes, the renewal of life, and you have buds in the trees, and and then the summer comes and you feel the heat, the lovely sun, and you grow and grow and expand. And then you go into the fall where it's time to you know, let go and release. And and that's true, but the tree has always survived. All the conditions, as we have a blizzard there tonight, since all those conditions can happen, but guess what? The mountain's always gonna be there. Your tree is there, the mountain is not right. living. The conditions of and the tree we call ourselves a tree the conditions might change but we don't have to the conditions will change around us but we can still be strong and that's what we should do this coming year try to be the tree because the conditions around us in this world it's going to be harder i think i feel it's going to be a little bit harder and but we don't have to get caught up in it we don't no. have to have that mindset we can no. observe it again step back and start observing more Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you don't want to get caught up in that stuff. You want to no. just observe it. There's a lot of stuff to observe. You know, I find with me, I just came up to a revelation probably two weeks ago that I have to stop being so judgmental because I'm like, I just jump in. I shouldn't say that because, you know, all it is is experiences. We're all souls having experiences. There's nothing more. It's just experiences we're having. Who said one person's experience is, is better than the others? It isn't. It's just an experience. And we all share this space. We all share each other, by the way. That's why I think war is so strange because we're really killing one another. We're all connected as one. So why would you keep on, you know, giving yourself poison? You know, that's very you... true. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, this is a, a challenging year, but this is also a t greatest year for all of us to grow and expand. And Kelly, what you, just, you just mentioned to us before a year, about a year ago. And you still mention me a lot, which is we chose to be here at this time. Yes, because we're going to grow so much and yeah. everybody's going to grow at a different pace and have their different experiences. And every experience is important. And we have to realize where somebody is. OK, that's their experience where we are. It's another experience. True. That's all. Colin Me Happy says I've been very fatigued lately. I understand that. Yeah. Are there medita meditation, spiritual exercise I could do to decrease my extreme fatigue? Kelly, what do you think? I do. I mean, I, first of all, know this, that the energies are shifting right now. And a lot of people I have he heard from everybody been very, very fatigued. I remember, James, remember you called me and you said, what are you doing? And I said, I have to sleep. I'm oh, exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't tired. move. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was a damn. And then all of a sudden I had started having a lot more energy. 
So just rest. First of all, call me happy. Just rest when that rest. is. And the spiritual exercises might be going inward and doing some meditation and rest. I mean, meditation and rest and breathing. You know, what do you think, James? I, I, I whatever makes your heart feel good and rest, one hundred percent. I take rest. naps now a lot. Yeah, twice a day. I'm taking a nap. Now, for me, of course, I was very ill with COVID, and that has that extreme. I did ask my doctors, yes, there is a fatigue, and everybody experiences it differently. So some people, fatigue is very strong, other people it is not. So but <clears throat> your body will speak to you. And if you need to rest, stop and rest. Right. And don't feel obligated to other people. you got to take care of the, the body and do things that you enjoy that feed your soul. So, for instance, I'm going to go to the gym and do some um, elliptical work work and i love doing that i love i haven't done it in a long time now i feel like i can do it i love going to the beach i'm gonna walk down the beach sunsets time for yourself this two or three days ago i went and got a glass of wine i haven't had wine in a long time and, mm -hmm. it, and it was enjoyable and you know just those little things that you, yeah. that feed your soul that make you feel better but um yeah as far as exercises med meditation i love doing is a beautiful green light of healing and however you want to experience that, whether it's through plants, whether it's through visualization of green, whether it's going to the grocery store and seeing all the green fruits, I've done that. Which is what I love to do. That's what I did a couple I of days there and ago. Get the green. Yeah. I love, love, love it. I mean, that makes me very happy. Yeah. 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 And um, I don't know, art. I mean, I'm going to be doing some artwork here. I, 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 I'm i doing that. I forgot to bring my paint, so I'm going to go to the store and get some. But that makes me happy. And that relaxes. A good and, book is good right, relax. Right, but also the painting really just gets you out of your way and it makes you so yeah. creative and you just start to create. I mean, these yeah. are amazing energies for this kind of uh, work right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm doing that tomorrow. I'm painting the sunset. There's no doubt about it. Mm. Oh, you should. The picture. I took I a picture of that. Picture. And I took you a picture of it. It was you amazing. <laughs> that was extraordinary. Uh, Lori says, you can't find a book talking to heaven. <laughs> It's out there, Lori. Believe me, oh. it is out there. Oh, it's out there. I have it right here. Yes, it's you can't definitely. get it from Barnes and Noble, but try Amazon. And there, it's a there are some used copies too, but you can find it. It's a it's it's out there. Yeah. Um. Oh my God. Oh, La B, thank you, Lavas, for joining us first time. Thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. Creating um, is a vibration of heaven, says Natalie. It's very true. Renee Hunzel, Blessed Kelly and James, a question, please. Okay. I have a high fever, not feeling well. Uh, I've heard some people speak of it. Energy. That is funny and very interesting, Renee. Before even I read the second sentence, I saw it when I first read that. Oh, it's energetically. You're picking up energies. And then you wrote that. I think it's energy purging. I think that's what I mm -hmm. did as well, purging. I think it's part of the energy that's going on. My dog was purging the other day. I mean, I, and that she was feeling great, but I know she was purging. It was the energy. My massage guy was with me. He goes, you know, your dog is feeling energy. She's purging the energy. So it does. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Well, and this is a lot of Sagittarius energy in Vedic astrology. The Sagittarius is fire. So it's purging. Definitely purging. All of this. What about having like a fire spicy meal? Would that make any difference? Not really. I probably would. I've been doing that because so, we right? talked about Thai. I made some Thai soup. And, uh, I had some ramen earlier. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun. Um, so you know, Kelly, you helped me a lot going. when you said to me when I was sick, you said, you just got to get through the end of December and you'll be fine. And it's exactly what it was. Because my mother came through and said, you're going to be like a little boy again. And that was, I think she said it months ago. And she said, in two weeks, you'll be like a little boy. And I'm like, that happened. And now I was not like a little boy. I'm like, okay, because the timing is off over there. But um, I can't really. I had a funny experience with your mother. Do you remember this? We were on the cruise. I had a very funny experience. I was sick as a dog on the cruise. We were on the cruise together, not knowing I had COVID, but I was very sick. And all of a sudden, I, I, I got a, I, something told me, get up now. It was five in the morning. And this woman said to me, get up now and pack your bags. You need to get ready to go now. And I was like, what? And she wouldn't let me back down. I said, well, okay. And I got up, I packed my bags. The fun and I described this woman to you and you said, That's my mother. Oh, it was definitely your mother. And she's and if it wasn't for her Strong. telling me that, I, I swear to you, I would not have been packed because I was so sick. It was the only time I had to get up and pack. Was that the night, the day we went to the airport? When I ended up in the wheelchair without knowing That's it? That's correct. <laughs> that very day. Oh, that was week we were weak. That was a day after my birthday. Yeah. And we went, and I was like, I don't remember how we got there. And I had no I idea. Like, delirious. I, I, I got there, but I just sat in one of those wheelchairs. I had to sit down. And next thing you know, sometimes we'll need to get. Yeah. 
<laughs> Joy Shed, is the vision board class in person or on Zoom? It's on Zoom and it where is it being offered on Zoom? So anybody can take it and it's at I think it's at 9 a.m. Pacific time, I think. But well, they should go to your website and register. go to my website, kellywhite.com, and it should be on my website. I know it's on my Facebook and it's on um, Eventbrite. So, but thank you for asking. Yeah. Kelly, you mentioned a therapist in New York City several times. What is her name? Her name is Elizabeth Scott. Elizabeth Scott, and she's a wonderful therapist uh, who does spirituality. Oh, that's and great. she's wonderful. And you can find her on Psychology Today, Elizabeth Scott in New York. She's fabulous. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Remember, Let's... Ann Margaret said, I, "Oh my God, I'm... <laughs> Ann Margaret, just kill me." She was. I mean, she was. <laughs> Ann Margaret didn't get off the ship. She said she was waking by the captain, inviting all the new people. Welcome aboard! And she just woke up. Said, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> And then ended up in the hospital because she was sick because everyone got so That's sick. right. She got really sick. It oh, my gosh. It was a cruise, boy. Everybody wow. got COVID. Everybody I mean, did. Oh, I love this. Kyle Elizabeth Hodges says, I can't wear watches. They stop. She yeah. said, all batteries in my house, cars, tractors. Now, that's absolutely. You're not cursed. She says, I think I'm cursed. You're not cursed no. at all. And no. it's actually your vibration rising. Yeah. It yeah. happens. I mean, Kelly will tell you. I mean. Oh. It happens. Oh, I oh, it really happened your to book me. You talk about it. Wow, I yeah. do. It was yeah. unbelievable having to go through this. So you went through a lot, Kelly. You're very humble, but when the book comes out, you guys, you'll be freaked out. I was freaked out. I know, <laughs> Kelly. Like this couldn't have happened. Did this really happen? Oh my God! And it happened. When I started telling you the story years and years ago, you go, "You have to write this. You have to write <laughs> this." <laughs> Kelly Dennis. Oh, Kelly, you got to hear the story. And then the three of us had dinner together. I don't know if you remember this. It was it was fantastic. Okay, Jean Buski Wakorica. I don't know if I said your name right. I've had breast cancer twice, and to pay it forward, I've started a breast cancer nonprofit. Fantastic. Good. Back in fifteen, I love what I do, but my true desire is spirit communication. Is the origin my calling, or can it also be spirit communication? You can do both. Oh, your organization. Oh, you can do both. What do you think, James? Well, a couple of things I want to ask you, first of all. Okay. Because <laughs> my mind went somewhere else. Um, I don't know what Louise Hay says about breast cancer, but you know, because your mom had breast cancer. Yeah. Twice. Is mm -hmm. there anything to do with um, mothering, yes. the mothering thing with the breast cancer? It's, it's, sometimes it's broken heart. Broken heart. Sometimes it's the uh, love lost. Sometimes it's in a family constellation. It could go back in the trauma in the family of love loss. Was there a loss? Was somebody not nourished? Was there a mother issue? Yeah. could go in any of those directions. Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to find out. But I don't know. I think that um, I think you're a teacher. So and I think mm -hmm. the breast cancer is a really great beginning of teaching. I would get deeper into that and let that be your beginning of that jumping off point to helping people. And the mediumship will come in, the communication. You'll, you'll be inspired anyway. But that, that happened for a very specific reason for you to teach people. That's my feeling. You do yeah. what you have to, you have to. But I, I think it's an opportunity for you to give insight to others about that condition. It's a very, you know, it's, it's out there. So, so common now. So Lisa O says, how do you not let jealousy get to you? Well, well, it's a lower vibration, Lisa. You think of it like that. I, I learned the hard way. Uh, you probably did, Kelly, too, the hard way. I, I, I mean, when I became successful, everyone was. Oh, jealous. you really? Yeah, you really. I mean, other mediums, well known yeah. mediums, and other people in my yeah. family. And it's like friends. I'm like, what? And I didn't expect jealousy to be part of that because it's like I worked yeah. my rear end. I that. And I, I stayed, you know, when you work hard and you really do the work and you're disciplined, and, and people that are successful who worked hard, people sometimes will see the hard work and just see the success. And they just see, oh, they're that. And it's just interesting that people, I don't know, it's jealousy is a love vibration. Like you said, it's everybody has their experiences. And there's some people that come in and have experience of being very successful, having a lot of money. Yeah. Um, people have no money, no financial things. Some We're all learning. It's all about learning. No one's better than anybody else. So you got to go inside. It's jealousy. What's what? Go inside. What, what are you jealous of? What inside of you is not healed? What inside of you is not wholeness of being that needs oh that's a great one what inside of you is not being. healed yeah because i always come back to self yeah so what within you is not in the wholeness of being 
that you have that vibration of jealousy? Is there something not met? Uh, it sounds like there might be something not met that somebody else you don't have. Maybe it goes back to your childhood too. There's so many reasons behind it. But again, I think instead of judging it, oh, this is bad, this is good, just go into, wow, let me discover what this is from. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, Teresa Etter says, do you have techniques that you recommend for keeping your vibration up in the winter months? Do you, well, Kelly would know that more than I can. I do. I do. Snow. I do. Yeah. No, first of all, I mean, you have to physically take really good care of yourself. I have greens around me constantly, green tea, green vegetables, green drink, uh, my lemon water. That helps me with keeping that up. I st I keep meditating. But the other thing is, it's what your friend Jordy said to me at your 60th birthday. I said to her, oh, Jordy, what am I going to do? I'm moving to the, you know, to the farm. <laughs> what do I do in the middle of the, of the, you know, the United States? What do I do? And she said, oh, she said, I said, what do I do in winter? And she said, oh, winter is when I restore my soul. And the way she said it, I went, oh, I can't wait to go in winter to restore my soul. There was something so profound that I wanted to do the way she said that. And it's and it really is. True. And I've been with Jordy in all seasons. And um, yes, you have. She's yeah, always and, the most positive oh, thinker. I mean, a hundred. She I have a quick Jordy story. She's like she's my mom. I call her mom. I met Jordy many, many years ago, 25 years ago on a cruise. My first cruise I ever did the Stella Solaris in Greece. Kelly, you would not have believed the ship. It was it was like a tugboat. <laughs> and um, going on the ship, and my partner time, Brian, was in front of me. And I remember I turned around, there was this lady with beautiful, like green eyes, beautiful, like beautiful. And I said, Oh, hello, how are you? And she goes, I'm great. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm on your trip. And I'm, I mean, I made it, my clothes didn't, but that's exactly the same thing. So I turned to Brian and I said, we're hanging out with this lady because she has sure. a great attitude. And she um, has been my spiritual mom since she lost her son. Um, he died in a, of an explosion. And that's the hardest thing. I think lose a child, but she said it's one of the greatest things in her life because she learned so much from that. And he's always around. There's no death. He's always around. He even is around in winter. There was one winter where she showed me this. His name was Ian. And the condensation on the glass, I... A N. I saw it being printed from him. Wow. I stayed at Jordy's house where all of a sudden music was going somewhere. What is the music? She goes, Oh, that's Ian. He's in his room. I stayed in his room, which is called the heaven room because it's like you're on this bed. It feels like heaven. Mm. And that was a radio in his room. So I went to the room and I pulled the plug out. And I said, Okay, well, I pulled the plug out. I was sitting there watching television. Music starts again. I said, Jordy, he goes, He won't stop unless you acknowledge him. I said, Okay, Ian, enough. And uh, <laughs> It's great, but she is a great, great Pisces, uh, Sagittarius moon, uh, no, Libra, Libra moon, um, I think Sag rising, and mm -hmm. Aquarius, Pisces cusp, in Western. But yeah. one of the kindest people I've met in my life. Kindest people. She's so wonderful. And you know, this is an, an interesting time with uh, Jordy because, oh, that's what we're going to get into. When I was sick, I, I called her up afterwards and I said, you know, it was a tough time for me. And I'm, one of the Fridays, and so I thought I was going to go. And she says, "What time was that?" And I said, "I think it was like nine a.m. my time." Well, oh, wow. that time meditation, you came in my meditation, and you wearing a cream like top and cream pants, and you said, "I'm ready to go." I'm, I think I might have to go. And you and I, she goes, "I thought you meant you know from San Diego to Santa Barbara, you're going to move, and you're deciding probably to move." And she goes, "I didn't know it was the other way around that you were going to leave the body." And I said, "Well, that's when I was thinking that maybe it's a possibility." And and she's as she's telling the story, I'm looking down, I'm wearing cream pants, and on oh, the stool is my cream sweater that I was wearing in that Friday. Okay, that's day. just ama that's that amazing. wild. <laughs> that's amazing. Wild. Wow, there's such a connection there with her. Oh yeah. I mean, she so she she's the real deal. Wow. The real deal. Oh. I yeah, like and winter time with her, and a lot of my, what I do is slow down. I put a fire on. I put them. I take my warm clothes out. I love wearing warm clothes and oh, I yeah. just make cuddly. I get lots of cuddly stuff mm -hmm. and I just do, um, I play cards. I mean, I paint. Um, I, I just stay in the house a lot and I just get a good book and that's what I do. Okay. I mean, it's lovely. That's what I love to do too. At Christmas, it's I watch the old classic movies. I watch um, Meet Me in St. Louis. I'd never seen it before. Hello. Was it good? It was great. It was Judy Garland's favorite movie she ever made. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. 
Here's a great question. This is from Ricky Tenhoff. She says, how do I get through my intense loneliness since all of my friends of 50 years have left California and I miss talking and have gone 25 days with not talking to anyone? People won't talk. They just want to text. My loneliness is like a cancer and I am so lonely. Wow. Well, that's a big one. Now, first of all, Kelly, I don't know if we talked about this. Went out to do Christmas cards. I looked at my address book and everybody was dead. Okay. We had a similar people. situation. Yeah. I know more people on the other side than I know in this world. <laughs> and, and the only way I could say, and the, who's this from? I didn't see the- Ricky Tenhoff. Ricky. So Ricky, you have to force, yeah. start having a relationship with yourself. Find out how great you are. And really enjoy who you are. You don't look outside yourself for happiness. You don't look outside you have to, uh, other people to fill that void. You have to fill it yourself. You have to start feeling good about yourself. Laugh at yourself every day. Do something you really love to do. Enjoy yourself. I have a dog, which is great because I goof with her and she goofs with me. But it also extends to people I meet in the street. I was uh, laughing and you know, I was coming to Santa Barbara from San Diego. People said, I'm really going to miss you here. And I said, well. I'll be back, but you got to feel good about yourself. You got, you know, I love as a medium. It's a very solitude type of existence. It really is. Yeah. Um, like I'm in this place by myself here on this retreat, if you will. Because how could you be by yourself? I love being by myself. Are you kidding? I laugh at my own jokes. I'm oh, so yeah. funny. I think <laughs> I think everything is funny. I just start laughing. It's I don't take it so seriously because I can't take it all so seriously. And when people cut me off in traffic, I start laughing or. The story, like everyone's sad. A lot of people are sad. Like sad. Come on, let's let's fly. And I turn it around and make it a game. But you have to go within yourself to find the happiness. You can't look outside yourself for that. What do you think, Kelly? I couldn't agree more. You have to go within, and you know, and also use this as an experience that you are now maybe going to find new friends. Also, you know, go inwards. Really start to enjoy yourself, and that energy starts to grow and. Maybe you want to join a new club, or maybe you right. want to do take a class. Or, yeah, people, I mean, use it as that I just kind of a cinema club. I, I just joined the cinema club. And you did? Every, yeah, every Friday I'm going to see a new show down at the, the, the library, and it's a cinema club. So that would be fun. I mean, wow. you know, somebody got to put yourself out there and just have a good time. And a cinema club? I can't wait cinema. to hear what movies. I just saw a good movie the other day. I saw Past Lives. Have you heard of it? I might have. What was it about? <laughs> it's, a new, it's a new movie that has just come out. I've heard the name of it, it's, but I don't... it's about a, a Korean. Um, it's a Korean family, but it's about a Korean. The, the name. My friend Marianne told me about this. I like on Iman or something, which means like there was a spiritual connection, a past life connection. Yeah. Like how right. can you have certain relationships that that they would cross you and you would have some sort of a a deep uh, past life connection? It was good. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, see, I, I am. Someone mentioned the my, maestro, maestro. Oh, I saw Maestro. Yeah, I saw Maestro. I like it to a point. Yeah. I, I thought I could have gone deeper. Did you guys tell me no one can watch for the first day? To watch yeah, it? no, you have. To, it, it took me two two days to watch it. it took me three days. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Brad Cooper. Take a class of something fun. I agree. I was yes. going to dance class for. I was going to take a dance class. I was playing so good last week. I was like, oh, I feel great. I'm back. And right. And I turned, and I was like, oh, <laughs> didn't stretch. Oh, no. That's a big thing. You actually have to stretch first. You do. But oh. going on a hike, doing something that makes you feel good. Right. Having fun. Yeah. Mimi Hurst says, I can see that little boy in you, James. Delightful. It's so true. He's never grown up. Oh, my gosh. Which is so pot, which I just love that. Dream Linus says, I lost my son something six weeks ago. He's 34. I'm very sorry. I hope he's okay. Of course he's okay. Are you okay, Mama? So don't he's okay. And um, again, that's a good lesson not to take on his stuff. Sometimes it's his journey, and you're gonna have the physical missing. Of course, that's natural. It's it's, it's a grief process. It's a hard one. Hardest lessons losing a child, I think. But oh yes, yeah. Okay, wait, and Lynn Gert says I keep seeing triple digits two 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 three what three three. Oh, it's great. It means that your soul has been programmed to pay attention. So every time you see a one one one, it's um, it starts to wake you up. Oh, look! There's one one one. One 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 is a new beginning. New beginning. Two right. is a partnership. Three 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 is ascended masters are in your you know your area. If you see four four four, 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 four angels, angels yeah. five 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 is change and and so on and so on. 
So if you start seeing numbers like this, this is great because it's got your soul. You have the attention now. So I think that's fantastic. Kathleen says, I learned to be at peace with being more alone. My best friend passed. Um, here we go. 2017. Yeah, my other best is depression. Everything has changed between us. I'd say but I'm feeling, leaving it in the hands. Yeah, it's hard. I know I was just given antidepressants recently. And I'm like, I don't need them. <laughs> No, I, I don't that, that's just not, no. not me because I was so this illness was so and um this therapist I had, I had to see I and I, I can't see therapists I mean I love therapy I think it's great for me it just I end up always being the therapist for the therapist I mean I'm always you know <laughs> turned around always always but, yes um, that's what happens <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of muscle testing too when someone gives me something like I should take it or not and I swear the body will always tell you yes or no yeah that's true it does do that yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, James, listen, we did a big pred uh, predictions year. You know, that was a big, big show that we did on predictions. And I think that a lot of people have seen a that. Lot of, a lot, a of, lot sure of people. Have. YouTube, everybody has seen that. A it lot of people. It was a big have. one. Yeah, it's a big we one. Gave a lot of information. So that's why now it's really important to set your intentions of what do you, how do you want to grow this year? Right. How do you? want to grow because this is a year of great growth it's an eight year eights connect us between heaven and earth it's a powerful year it's eight is represented by saturn the planet saturn saturn means work it means health it means karma and it means a responsibility and so, i also got the sense it means resourcefulness oh i yeah oh absolutely oh i love that resourcefulness that just came into my head <laughs> i love that i think mean, that's really important you know Everything we need, we have inside us, everybody. Don't look outside. You have everything you need here. We're like, right on. We're like a big treasure chest. And all you got to do is have the courage to open it up and look inside, and you'll find it. You might have to go down below it, down beneath, and grab something, but you could do it. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I think that's great, James. And um, now, mediumship course Wednesday, I'm doing a mediumship class. Um, I'm oh, are you on mediumship too now? Yes, I am. Okay. So one of the calls somebody had asked about Wednesday. that. Yeah, Wednesday is one of my calls. I have a lot of calls coming up with people, so we have all that mediumship plus. It's good. So, everything on my school, Van Product, um, my JV School Mystical Arts. Oh, good, Kelly. Good. Your gym post the other day made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny, and I have again, I have two more that'll come out. You guys will be howling. It's so fun. I love working out, James. I mean, I'm having fun with it. Good. And, and you look great. And I, I can't wait to get back into it because I haven't been two years. So I, I can't wait to start again. Now well, and cool. you're going to have an extraordinary experience. Yeah. You know, being in the Santa Barbara area, it's going to be great energy yeah. for you. Meeting some nice people. I mean, I went to the yeah. dog park and there was a man coming. He goes, you need a real estate agent? And I said, well, maybe. And he goes, here, let's have to go coffee. I'm like, okay. Oh, my gosh. I had people walking up to me and saying, how are you? I said, good. And they don't know who I am, but they just... They just, I don't know. I just, because I, my vibration, I guess. Oh my God. And Pearl, you... Pearl opens the door for anything. So. Oh, well, that one for sure. For sure. And she's got to be a lot of inspiration for you too. Yeah. You know? She's exhausted. Oh she knows gosh. the end of the show and she gets up and ready to go. When she up. says, I got to go. Okay. Well, thanks. And we, thanks oh, you're everybody. welcome. Everybody, we have some guests coming on in the next two or three weeks, right? We James? do a lot we of interesting do. guests coming mm -hmm. on. Really interesting people coming on. So. Yeah, very much so. Some of the spiritual business we're going to talk about, doing a spiritual business. Yeah. Um, also, my my protege is coming on, Michaela. Yes. I, don't know you know Michaela. I have not met her, but Michaela's I've heard about her. Michaela's great, and she's she's great. She's full of integrity, and oh, yeah, she's my protege, I would tell you that. I met her when she was 14, and now she's in the late 20s, and she's been studying media for a long time, wow. development circles, and um, yeah, so... Wow, well, that's going to be fun. And we have the artist. And we have a psychic artist coming on who um, really presented a, a gift to myself and Kelly. And, and the man is extraordinary. I just and he love channels it. This in, in channels, uh, and uh, he's a really nice, nice soul. He just sent me a lovely painting, and Kelly as well. And um, he's a he's nice man. He's, he's in galleries all over the world, this man. You know, his work is extraordinary. <laughs> Invite good. him on the show. I can't wait. So, all right. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Mary. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Your hosts, James Van Prague and Kelly White, are dedicated to bridging the earthly therapeutic world and the world beyond, aiming to guide you on a path of self-discovery 
and spiritual enlightenment. Every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, you can tune in live on YouTube and Facebook. Or, if you miss the live show, you can always find the latest episodes right here on your favorite podcast app. Remember, this journey of exploration and understanding continues weekly, and we're honored to be part of it with you. We encourage you to subscribe to our podcast if you haven't done so already, ensuring you never miss an episode of our foray into the unseen realms of the many lessons they hold for us. Until next time, stay open-minded, remain curious, and remember, life and its myriad experiences extend beyond the physical plane. See you next time on Both Sides Now and Beyond.